In the first of our key verses for today, again, we see that Peter stated the end of all things is at hand. This is to say that the end of all things is really close. Now, when people hear that, when people speak about the end, the thought of the, the end being close, there are three different responses. All right. Some will hear talk about the end being close and they will take that talk very seriously. Others will hear talk about the end and they will either pay it no attention mm -hmm. or they will mock it and they will take it lightly that the end is near. All right. All right. Me, I take a look around at the present conditions of our world. Mm -hmm. And I tell you today that I choose to take it very seriously that the end of all things is at hand. Now, some may think that I'm crazy, but again, I just take a look around. Mm -hmm. I take a look at the gas prices. I take a look at the cost of living being out of this world high. Again, as I said last week, hatred and wickedness abounds all around us in our society and in our world. And again, it seems that our society and our world tolerates mm -hmm. that hatred and wickedness abounds. Yeah, yeah. While I preach earnestly about the condition of the world and others labor earnestly to do something about the condition of our world, few actually seem to listen, few actually seem to care, few actually seem to desire for there to be change, for there to be growth, and for there to be progress in our society. In other words, it seems that few seem to care for there to be peace in our society and in our world. All right, all right. To be frank, we live in the midst of wickedness. We live in the midst of great trouble. Yeah. I'm reminded of what John the Baptist and what Jesus, what they had to say when they described the, the condition of the world in which they lived in. Mm -hmm. When they said that they lived in a world that was filled with a brood of vipers, I believe that we live in the very same world today. You see, we still live in a world that seeks to poison, mm -hmm. a world that still seeks to kill its prey especially all of those who are a child of God. Uh -huh. yeah. So how does one who truly believes in the Lord, how does this one go about living in the midst of wickedness? Right. How does this one go about living in the midst of trouble? As you have heard me say, as recently as last week's sermon, it can be easy for us to be fearful of the world in which we live in. Mm -hmm. Yet, as we know, God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has given us the spirit of love, mm -hmm. the spirit of power, the spirit of sound mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we already know that in the midst of wickedness, in the midst of trouble, mm -hmm. we should stand steadfast with that spirit of power. Right. We should stand steadfast with that spirit of love and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. In other words, in the midst of wickedness, you and I, the children, the genuine believers of the Lord, we ought to stand in that spirit of hope. All right, all right. You and I, along with those of Peter's day, mm -hmm. we live in the age of the church. This is the age of the gospel being present in our world. Mm -hmm. This is the age of the gospel being ministered throughout the world to all nations of people. Yeah. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
We minister the gospel in the world today because the Lord has commissioned us to do so. The reason for the ministering of the gospel is because we know that the end of all things is at hand. In other words, we know that the day of the Lord's judgment, we know that it is coming. We know that it is fast approaching. The end of all things is something that has been prophesied about since God spoke of the serpent's defeat in the garden. I would suggest to you today that the end of all things was signal at the cross when Jesus shed his blood for you and for me, when he shed his blood for the world. You see, I, I want you to know that at the cross, God was putting the world on notice. At the cross, God was telling the world that it is time for you to repent because judgment is knocking on the door. So because the day of the Lord is fast approaching, we minister to the world today. Get ready because Jesus is coming. Jesus, when he described the signs of the end being near to the disciples, Mm -hmm. I want you to pay close attention to these signs. In the 24th chapter of Matthew's gospel, in the third through the 14th verse, Mm -hmm. you see that Jesus stated that the difficulties the believers would face would be incredibly difficult as we would live in the midst of trouble and in the midst of wickedness. Jesus, he first said there in that passage of scripture that many would come in his name to deceive. Mm -hmm. There are many false teachers in our world today who go out and deceive many. Mm -hmm. In that passage of scripture, Jesus then said that there would be rumors of wars and in great conflict between nations and between kingdoms said that these things, these rumors of wars and the great conflict, they will happen. They will come to pass. Jesus said, and he said that we should not be fearful of those things happening. Mm -hmm. We have seen so much conflict in our world. Haven't we? You no, know, some of us are the children. Some of us are the grandchildren or the great grandchildren of those who live through world wars. In that same passage of scripture, Jesus also spoke of there being famines, of there being pestilences, of there being earthquakes, meaning great natural disasters. And and he said that these things will take place in various places, meaning in different or in many places. Again, we have seen this happen in our lifetime as well, just as recently as a couple years ago. Lastly, in that same passage of scripture there, I want you to take note that Jesus spoke of the spiritual condition of the world when he spoke about the the end being at hand, when he spoke of the signs of the end of the age being near. Jesus, in that passage of scripture, said that believers would be hated. He said that believers would be persecuted for his name's sake. Jesus, he then said there again, I want you to pay very close attention to, and I want you to hear these words. Jesus said that lawlessness would abound, and he said that love would grow cold. Lawlessness would abound. Love would grow cold. Well, well. How can I and you, how can we not take the signs of the time seriously? Mm -hmm. Think about the world that we live in today. Mm -hmm. Now, now some will suggest that the world has always been like this. (laughs) They'll say that the world has, has been this way. But to me, something seems different today. 
These days are, are very troubling to me. As I look around and as I see lawlessness, that is wickedness and hatred, I see it doing nothing but growing. It, it, again, it abounds. And, and, I, and I tell you today, it, to me, maybe it's just me, but there seems to be very little love in the world. If it ain't somebody you know, it seems that people just don't care. That's right. Come on. These days are hard on all people. Yeah. But I tell you that these days are especially hard on, on the one who is a child of God. Mm -hmm. Because we know that this world should be a better place. All right. Come on. And that the potential is there for the world to be a better place as well. Again, I say to you today that we are living in the midst of wickedness. We are living in the midst of lawlessness, where lawlessness abounds. We are living in the midst of where love has grown cold. The world, I tell you today, that it is so lawless that, again, we don't take seriously the day of the Lord being at hand. Now, to ignore or to mock the day of the Lord being at hand is to mock the Lord's final judgment. This is to not take him or his judgment seriously. And, and I tell you, to the one that lives with this type of mindset, it is very troubling. It is very disturbing. Not to take God seriously. Yes, yes, yes. That scares me. Mm -hmm. In the 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel, in my background scripture for today, when Jesus sent his disciples out to minister for the very first time, in the 16th verse in that chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus, you'll see, he said to them that he was sending them out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Think about that. Even you and I, we have been sent out in the midst of wolves today. Sheep. Now, they, they, they are innocent and, and helpless creatures, aren't they? Especially when, when, we, we, when we stand them up and when we compare them to a wolf. Wolves, they are, are highly intelligent, whether you realize that or not. Right. Wolves, we know, are incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. They are incredibly dangerous predators mm -hmm. that we know hunt in packs. Yeah, yeah. Think about that, that analogy that Jesus has, has just made there. I believe that this analogy speaks again to the kind of world in which you and I live in and the kind the world that, that we that we minister in as well. All right. This world is a very dangerous place. Mm -hmm. It is a very troubling place as well. The, the, the image that that we have of living in the midst of wickedness, according to Scripture, is so far living among a brood of vipers right. on the hunting grounds of wolves that are highly intelligent and hunt in packs. Right. So again, how, how do we go about living in the midst of wickedness mm -hmm. that is filled with venomous vipers and, and with wolves that are, that are on the hunt? How do we go about ministering in this world? A world that will rather tolerate lawlessness, mm -hmm. wickedness, and, and, and hatred, as opposed to fearing God and his judgment. All right. How do we go about ministering to this world? In his first letter, Peter, he, he gives us an answer. And I believe that it is one that we know very well. Mm -hmm. We'll see it said to us there in that very first verse where Peter advised that we should arm ourselves, he said there, with the same mind of Christ who suffered, Jesus yeah, said, yeah. or Peter said there of Jesus, 
who suffered for us in his service mm -hmm. to his father. Mm -hmm. Christ, who we should remember again, was and is the Lamb of God. This, this, this Lamb, I want you to understand, who was living in the midst of wickedness, in the midst of a brood of vipers, in the midst of wolves that were on the hunt. The Lamb of God lived in it. So I tell you today that I certainly believe that it is best for us to look to the frame of mind that Jesus had himself mm -hmm. as he lived in the midst of wickedness so that, again, we can better carry ourselves in this very same world. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he there again in the 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel and again in that very same 16th verse where he had sent the disciples out, he advised the disciples to be as wise as serpents yes, yes. and harmless, Jesus said, as doves. Mm -hmm. he, he told them to go out in this world right. and, and to be wise as serpents mm -hmm. and, and harmless as doves. That goes for us as well today. So, so let us think about that for a moment. Let, let us consider this for a moment. That, that again, we have to be as wise as, as a serpent in, in a world that is filled with venomous vipers, yet we have to be like a dove in, in a world that is, that is filled with wolves that are on the hunt. What, what does this mean to us exactly? Serpents, they are dangerous, as we know. All right. All right. But as dangerous as they are, serpents are also considered to be one of the most cunning and clever creatures that are, that are in our world. Mm -hmm. They know when to strike. They know when not to strike. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the serpent knows when to move and when to be patient and not move. Mm -hmm. The serpent, they know how to avoid danger. So the serpent is cautious, mm -hmm. if you will. With that frame of mind, Jesus, he was always in the right place at the right time. And he always struck at the right time. In, in other words, he always had a word to share that fit the moment while living in the midst of wickedness. All right. All right. Considering again that we live among a brood of vipers that seek to do nothing but to kill and to destroy, mm -hmm. the believer, we must know again when to move and when not to move. Now, as for the harmless dove, dove have always been seen as being peaceful. Mm -hmm. They are soft and gentle. They are innocent, we would say. Right. They are harmless, we would say. Mm -hmm. When you see a dove, the, the, the last thing that is on your mind or in your heart is fear. You aren't necessarily afraid of a dove. In fact, if a dove land in the room today, all of us would look at it and go, ah. Mm -hmm. We aren't afraid of the dove, are we? No, sir. In a world filled with dangerous wolves and vipers, mm -hmm. the harmless dove would be an image of relief. Right. Guess what that says for you and for me? Now, now, I want you to pay very close attention to the fact that, that Peter was combining both of these natures. He was combining them together into one. This, again, is the mindset of Christ. You see, we cannot just be the cunning serpent because the serpent's mindset by itself, it is a mindset that only seeks to consume and to devour. So we can't be just that way, can we? We also cannot be just the soft and gentle dove because 
eventually we would be overcome and destroyed by this very world of wickedness. So the believer, we, the child of God, we must combine. We must bring these two natures together so that we can be wise and so that we can also be humble as well in the midst of wickedness. By combining these two natures, we will know when to move, but not only will we know when to move, we will know how to move in the midst of wickedness and in the midst of trouble. Yes, sir. Now, Christ had this mindset as he was on a mission. Christ had this mindset as he was on a mission to carry out the will of his father. You see, God desired and I tell you today that God still desires for mankind to know him, to know his mercy, to know his love, to know his salvation, to know his glory. Yes, yes. You and I, we are on the same mission as Christ was. We are on a mission to let the world know in the midst of wickedness, we are carrying out the will of God Yes, sir. for us to carry out the will of the Lord while being in the midst of wickedness. Mm -hmm. We realize that it's not an easy task. Mm -hmm. It is a difficult task for us, the child of God. Mm -hmm. Yes, we must do it with the wisdom of a serpent and the harmlessness of a dove. But Peter also shared some helpful advice for us to help us make it mm -hmm. while we live and while we minister here in the midst of wickedness that I believe that all of us need to listen to, that all of us need to hear today so that we are encouraged as again, we live in these times. Right. In the second verse of the fourth chapter of first Peter, Peter wrote that the believer should no longer live in the flesh for the lust of men, but rather we should live for the will of God. To say that one should no longer live in the flesh would mean that one was once living in the flesh, right. meaning that one was living in wickedness. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that in the third and the fourth verse there, that Peter writes that, that some of us may have spent our days walking in lewdness. Some of us may have spent our days walking in lust and drunkenness, reveries, and in abominable idolatries. Some of us may have done that. This may be true for some of us. But today, as a child of God, we must not live that way anymore. Yeah, yeah. The child of God is no longer one of those that make up the midst of wickedness. Mm -hmm. We live surrounded by wickedness, but we are not one of the wicked ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, now is not the time for the child of God to conform in the midst of wickedness. Mm -hmm. Now is not the time for the child of God to run with those who are in the midst of wickedness and are living in that wickedness. Right. No, you see, we should in this time, in this day and age, we should be carrying out the Lord's will and sharing his message of repentance, his message of salvation. Because every second that passes by is a second closer to God's judgment. In our key verse for today, we'll see that Peter touched on this thought. When Peter, he again wrote there, the end of all things is at hand. But I, I want you to notice here. Even though Peter was speaking about the end being close, I want you to notice what he said following that. Mm -hmm. Peter said, therefore, be serious. Mm -hmm. 
Be watchful in your prayers. All right. In this day and age, Peter said, be serious. Right. Yes, yes. You see, unlike those who take lightly the days that we now live in, mm -hmm. you and I, the child of God, the genuine believer, we should be the ones who take these days very seriously. Mm -hmm. Even though we live in the, the midst of the in the midst of wickedness, we should take it seriously, and we should take it with great concern that we are living in these times. We should be greatly concerned for the souls of all of those that are living around us. You see, Peter he again had the day of judgment in mind when he wrote this. And we see him say there in the fifth verse, they, those who are living in wickedness, he says, they will give an account to him, the him being God. All right. They will give an account to him who is ready. God is ready, Peter said. Yes, yes. Him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Mm -hmm. God is sitting and he is ready. Meaning that at any moment, God is ready to come and judge the world. That is why we should take these days seriously. You see, many people are sadly losing their soul while living in the midst of wickedness. All because they aren't taking God's judgment seriously. All because they don't take that the Lord is approaching seriously. So we should minister with conviction. We should minister with conviction in order to save a soul right. while we live here in the midst of wickedness. Mm -hmm. We can't hold that message to ourselves. And, and you see, we can't be afraid of sharing this message in the midst of wickedness. All right. Again, let us consider Jesus, the Lamb of God, as he certainly took it very seriously while he was in this world to let the world know of God's judgment. He took it very seriously. He was not afraid. Though he was hated and people sought his life while he lived in the midst of wickedness, I want you to know that Jesus, he never relented. To remain strong in the midst of wickedness, Jesus, he would fast. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he would often pray to the Father to help him in carrying out his Father's will. All right. If Jesus prayed, mm -hmm. should we not pray as well? Yes. If he was living in the midst of wickedness, mm -hmm. and Jesus, the Son of God, felt moved to pray. Should we not feel the same way while we live in the midst of wickedness? With all that we are up against in this world, we too should be both watchful in our prayers. Just as Peter advised and just as Jesus did. We are no better than Christ. We are lower than Christ. You better believe that in this day and age, we need prayer. Every last one of us, we should be praying today. We need it. Our society need it. The world needs it. Be prayerful so that you can withstand all that that may come upon you. Be prayerful so that you can withstand all that, that harm that may come your way because of the wickedness and the hatred that abounds all around us, because of the lawlessness that abounds all around us. We should be prayerful for our physical, our mental, our emotional, and definitely our spiritual health in the midst of wickedness. You see, being prayerful will help us to be able to endure. Being prayerful while we are living in the midst of wickedness, it will help us to be able to persevere. It will also help us 
in being able to carry out the will of the Lord. Yes. Lastly, with the mind of Christ in his mind, mm -hmm. Peter, he advised us to move with fervent love yes. in that passage of scripture. Yes. Yes. Move with fervent love in the midst of wickedness. Mm -hmm. now, now, when someone hears that, that we should move with fervent love in these days, they will look at you like you crazy. I preach about how we should go out in grace and in love all the time. And I imagine those that are, that, that watch and, and those that listen, they hear me say that and they, ah, oh, there he goes again. They, they don't like to hear it. There, there are many who profess to be a, a child of God that do not like to hear that they need to go out in grace and in love. All right, all right. So I understand that this will certainly sound crazy. Mm -hmm. That will even sound crazy to the one who is supposed to be of faith. Mm -hmm. Because how can love in our minds work in a world of wickedness and hatred where lawlessness abounds? Mm -hmm. How can love work in a world of vipers mm -hmm. and wolves? Mm -hmm. You, you see, the problem that, that we have today is that we underestimate the power of love. Yeah, yeah. We underestimate. Mm -hmm. You see, we know everything. <laughs> Yet we know nothing. We underestimate the power of love, oh, yeah. especially love that is fervent. Mm -hmm. You see, if, if, if love does not work, come on, come on. That would be to say that the Lord don't work. Right. Do you hear me? Amen. If we say that love does not work, we're saying that God does not work because God himself is love. Right. Do you believe that God doesn't work today? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that God can't work in, in the midst of wickedness? I want you to understand today that God can work in the midst of wickedness. Yeah, yeah. I want you to understand today that fervent love can work while we live in the midst of wickedness. Mm -hmm. We know this because of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. When he was surrounded by the brood of vipers and the wolves that sought to antagonize him and even destroy him, mm -hmm. we know that Jesus moved with love. And, and by moving with love, we know that Jesus saved many souls. The vipers and wolves, they, they, they who are of the world today, they view love as a weakness. Mm -hmm. But in the 13th chapter of first Corinthians, Paul said otherwise. You see, Paul in the 13th chapter of first Corinthians and in the eighth through the 13th verse, Paul said that love never fails. You see, he was able to say this because God himself, who is love, never fails. Mm -hmm. Prophecies, Paul said, will eventually be fulfilled and, and be no more. They will eventually pass away. They will eventually fail, Paul said. Speaking in tongues, Paul said, will eventually be no more as well. Right. Knowledge. Mm -hmm. As powerful as knowledge is in our world, Paul said it too will eventually pass away. Because as we know, this world, it is a temporary place. However, love, Paul said, will never cease. All right. All right. In other words, love will be eternal. Love will be eternal because God is love and God is eternal himself. This is why Paul at the end there of that chapter of first Corinthians, this is why he was able to say that out of all things, love is the greatest of them all. As Peter said, the fervent love of others will cover a multitude of sins, even in the midst of wickedness. We know this because Jesus has already done this before. Oh, yes. 
You see, this is a thought that we see repeatedly mentioned throughout Scripture. Solomon in Proverbs wrote that, her, that hatred stirs up strife, while love, on the other hand, covers sin. In, in his letter, James, he echoed this very same thought when he wrote that one who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sin. You see, this is the point. Mm -hmm. This is the point for us, the true believer. Saving a soul from death in the midst of wickedness. That is what we are meant to do. All right, all right. So this is why you hear me often share the message of having fervent love for one another. Mm -hmm. Because love can save. Mm -hmm. We know that we know what fervent love is able to do because Jesus again saved us. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is the manifestation. He is the expression. He is the proof All right. that love can save. Mm -hmm. Though we were once lost in the midst of wickedness, through his love, Jesus, he found us, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Not only did Jesus find us, but he again freed us from the bondage of sin. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul said, you he made alive. That is speaking to Jesus. That is speaking to the Lord who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. But God, Paul said, who is rich in mercy because of his great love of which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he God made us alive together with Christ by grace. Paul said, you have been saved by love, by God's unconditional love for us. We have been saved. It may seem difficult to live and then minister in the midst of wickedness. The day may seem tough. The day may be hard on you. But I tell you that Jesus has shown us and Peter has reminded us. He has encouraged us that we can make it. We can make it in the midst of wickedness. We can endure in the midst of wickedness. We can persevere in the midst of wickedness. With that in mind, with a mind that is for Christ, a mindset that is like Christ, I tell you today that we should be the light in darkness. With the mind that is of Christ, we should run against wickedness. Mm -hmm. Not with wickedness. We should run against wickedness with all hope and with all righteousness for the world to see. Mm -hmm. The writer of Hebrews said it best when they encouraged us to stir up love, to stir up the good works and to exhort one another as we see the day approaching. Mm -hmm. The day again referring to the day of the Lord, mm -hmm. his final judgment. Mm -hmm. To add to the thought of stirring each other up to carry forth the good work of God while we are in the midst of wickedness, we'll see Peter encourage the believer to be hospitable. Peter encouraged us to be hospitable to one another without grumbling. You see, the last thing that we ought to do as we live in the midst of wickedness, as we live in these troubling times, the last thing we ought to be to one another as brothers and as sisters of Christ is an adversary. All right. All right. Don't we already have enough on our plate to deal with? <laughs> In the midst of wickedness, the last thing that I want to deal with as an adversary is one who is supposed to be a child of God. Peter, there in the 10th verse, he encouraged us to be as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. We do this by, again, being wise as serpents, yet 
as harmless as doves. We do this again by living for the will of the Lord and carrying out his will in fervent love. This is what we ought to be doing in this day and age. Peter, he encouraged us to minister with the ability that the Lord supplies us with. Doing these things, I want you to know, it will glorify the Lord and it will glorify God while we are living in the midst of wickedness. And it will also allow the world to see him, our Lord. So let us not be afraid of the time in which we live in because we have been made ready for these times. We are fit and we are ready for the day. And will you answer the call of the Lord? As I said in the Sunday school lesson, we will answer the call of God in this day while you live in the midst of wickedness. You see, I tell you that we are going to make it. The cost of living, yes, is high. Gas prices, yes, is through the roof. Times are hard, but we are ready for these times. And I believe that we can overcome these times and I believe that we can do it because God has said that we can. God has said that we will make it. God has said that we will overcome so long as we have placed our faith in him. Do you believe that you can make it today? I certainly hope that you know that you can make it in the midst of wickedness. Amen. 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 Amen.